Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's third video. I've got a little extra video for you uh, here. So we're going to look at the Jamie Season model uh, for this one. Uh, we're going to go three months ahead with Japanese Michoshiro HC Season model taken through June, July and August through the summer of 2021. We'll see what Jamie is forecasting for this summer in a second. A little bit of a surprise upload, uh, perhaps. This goes ahead of the, uh, of the um, third and final season model roundup that's going to be released on Saturday. So on Saturday, we're going to get all the long range models together, see what we're all sharing for the last time for summer 2021. It's going to be about 15 long range models that we'll get together on Saturday. And the chairman will form part of that, of course, as it always does. But uh, because of there's, you know, going to be so many other models to go, go through with that, we can't looking detail what Jamie is showing. You can glean a lot of information from this model, so we also have to take this out and have a look at it in its own terms. That's what we're doing for this one, and I shall get on it for you very shortly. Just say that the first video release was our 7am upload. Also, we've released USA forecast was on a Wednesday, uh, and uh, we're going to have our 10 to 14 day for the UK and for Northern Europe coming up for you later on this afternoon. Busy old day at Gals Love it today. Please like, share, subscribe on all the videos. Thank you so much, Jeffrey, for doing that. Right, let's turn the webcam off then. And we're going to have a look at the uh, JMA Month 1. 500 millibar height anomaly, first of all, from the North Pole and Arctic view down. So this is going to be like JMA Wednesday or something, isn't it? This is the North Pole uh, just here. We've got the wider Arctic circle around there. And, of course, we've got the middle latitudes around here. Uh, so blue is extrapolating to below. Average heights, which is uh, low pressure. Yellow, orange and red extrapolate to above average heights, which is high pressure. Say so this is for month one. One, 500 millibar height on me for June. So if everything's working correct, this should be the most reliable part of all of the update, you know, because it's only uh, only like uh, one month away. Uh, right, so uh, this is how it's looking for uh, June. Remember, but, uh, below average heights is blue, uh, and above average heights, yellow, orange, and red. Uh, right, so uh, low pressure to our north and northeast during June, a chop low pressure in over Scandinavia and to our north. High pressure is in the middle of the Atlantic and going down towards Spain. I mean, it looks like it would be a relatively coolish signal, uh, therefore, would send the jet stream on a northwest southeast alignment. So quite a cool, uh, cool uh, jet stream and wind direction to start us off. And probably quite unsettled as well, especially for more, for more northern areas. That said, the Atlantic is rather blocked off, so I wouldn't expect a deluge of a month. But rather mixed and quite cool would be my interpretation uh, for June. This is how July is looking. This is July's 500 millibar height to normally. So uh, uh, higher pressure in the Atlantic, generally to our west and uh, generally to our west and southwest. We've got lower pressure, not particularly low pressure. We've got lower pressure to our north. And I think we're just bringing in like a flat westerly type flow during uh, July. Uh, so that's going to be, I think that's going to be quite a coolish signal again for July. Rather flat, rather westerly. Uh, remember, westerlies in the summer are going to be cooler than easterlies. It flips around in the winter, where westerlies will always be warmer than easterlies in the winter. But in summer, westerly is actually quite a cool wind direction coming off the Atlantic Ocean. And could be a little bit changeable as well. You can't really see all that much in the way of low pressure there. There has to be low pressure. Uh, in some areas. So this whiter area just here, I would interpret that as a, as like low pressure to our north with high pressure out to our west. It implies a westerly type wind direction. So relatively cool, probably not all that wet, but relatively cool, relatively mixed, relatively changeable uh, for July as well. So June, July, both looking a little bit on the cool and uh, mixed side. Uh, August looks rather strange, I have to say. This is the 500 millibar height anomaly for August. So it looks like we've got some high pressure in the Atlantic, but perhaps just sending a general ridge from the Atlantic into uh, Northern Europe. There could be an area of high pressure just there as well. Generally, the darker the orange-yellow colour is where the centre of the ridge is going to be. So it looks like there's a centre of a ridge just there. There might be a centre of a ridge just there around Germany. If that's right, it could bring quite a lot of warm or even relatively hot air in from the east but it is a very strange anomaly that um between the two ridges so the ridge there and and the ridge there this yellow area might actually be a trough 
Um, so, uh, again, again, it's got to be low pressure somewhere. You look at that, can't really see much in the way of low pressure, except over top of the Arctic. That can't be right. You know, some parts of the meat plateaus, of course, will find themselves under a trough of low pressure. So where are the troughs? Um, probably where the uh, colours are less intense. So I suppose there's definitely going to be a trough through here, for example. That's got to be a trough, I would have thought. Um, but I'm just wondering, with the centre, with like a high pressure centre there, and then a high pressure centre there, um, whether this yellow area might actually be uh, a trough of low pressure. We're actually doing something a little bit like that. Anyway, high pressure could be just to our east. If it is, that might start dragging some much hotter air from the east and the southeast in August, because that's three months uh, away. So let's see if we can decipher a little bit more from the tropical mid-latitude view. We come back to June. British Isles in the top right-hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it. Now, we can't see the Arctic, Greenland, North Pole, all of those areas are off the chart up here. We've had a look at that view down, though, so we know what's going on. So we know that for June, and this is for June, um, we know that for June we've got low pressure going to be to our north. We've got high pressure going to be to our west and southwest. It looks like it's sending the jet stream and wind direction on a northwest southeast alignment. Could be rather cool, therefore, and uh, unsettled in June. The temperature anomaly for June, unsurprisingly, with that northwest southeast line to jet stream is being forecast by a GMA to be cooler than average, below average temperatures during uh, June, being predicted there for the UK and for Ireland. For precipitation, a bit of a north-south split, so northern areas are wetter than average. Scotland, Ireland, yeah, wetter than average. England and Wales coming out a little bit on the drier than average side. Uh, if I look at the wind arrows, that was a little bit difficult to make out, but you can see they are definitely like in a west, northwest, southeast uh, sort of alignment coming in from the Atlantic, a little bit like that. So I think there is a definite sort of west, northwest, uh, uh, northwest, southeast alignment to the jet stream. Um, so that's the reason it's a relatively mixed and coolish signal uh, for June to start us off. I don't want that one. That. Right, go through to July. And uh, we, again, we've got high pressure sort of centred uh, from Newfoundland in towards the middle of the Atlantic. We've got, uh, again, not like some lower pressure to our north. Not as low as in June, but still some lower pressure to our north. Just sort of rather flat and westerly, I think, in uh, July. Rather, rather uh, a forgettable uh, month, I think. The temperature anomaly is close to, uh, we're still a little bit below average you know, for more northern areas, not particularly exciting. And the uh, precipitation anomaly is a little bit drier, so that's uh, one thing, I suppose. Uh, it is getting drier through uh, July. Let's have a look at the uh, wind arrows, uh, show for wind direction. And it's, and it's sort of flat westerly, as expected. So, uh, again, you see the black arrows going in that uh, sort of direction into the UK and then on into uh, Western Europe as well. So westerly July, which is going to be quite cool. The model suggests near normal temperature, but that will be quite a cool wind direction for July. Uh, high pressure just to our west-southwest. So probably just a lot of very quiet weather, really. Uh, temperature's about average, a little bit on the cool side, probably quite a bit of cloud. Uh, best of the sunshine would be in the southwest, close to the area of high pressure. And then we get through into August, and we have this rather bizarre uh, sort of pattern for August. So still with that ridge from Newfoundland into the middle of the, uh, middle of the Atlantic there. It looks like there's a ridge over central and eastern parts of Europe as well. Let's see what the temperature anomaly is doing. So now we're average to a little bit above average uh, across the UK and Ireland. Hottest temperatures in Europe are like for this eastern, southeastern part of Europe. Uh, it looks a bit wetter, actually, and a little bit surprisingly so. Uh, August goes a little bit wetter than average. So it's a more unsettled month, even though temperatures are a bit higher. Maybe there's some volatility uh, around. But I say it's a very bizarre 500 millibar high dominant. Let's see what the wind direction is doing. So that is actually looking easterly uh, in in August. So it looks like we're bringing in easters. We see the black arrows uh, coming in from the east through there. If we come over here to this side of the chart, again, the black arrows are in from the east. There's a sort of a meeting area that takes place around here between westerlies and uh, easterlies. So I think there's a trough of low pressure through there. I think there's a trough of low, despite what 500 millibars show for all those yellow colours, I think there's a trough of low pressure 
through here, um, where we've got these westerlies and easterlies meeting. And uh, within that trough of low pressure uh, through there, of course, we might start to push up heavy showers of thunderstorms into UK. So I assume that's why it's going for a little bit of a wetter than average uh, signal, despite the colours on the 500 millibar height anomaly being uh, a, a more of a yellow uh, type colour, which you think is uh, going to be higher pressure. But that's not necessarily uh, the case. That's a good example of how sometimes a 500 millibar height anomaly can uh, lead you up the yard path a little bit, because that's actually the most unsettled month of uh, the of the summer with above average rainfall in many areas courtesy of probably quite volatile weather so i would have thought uh, you know uh, quite a warm but potentially uh, a little bit wet and thundery sort of august is likely there with rather more of an easterly type flow Oh, but it is month number three, so it's the most unreliable part of the uh, update, so not really worth worrying about. So a bit of a mixed summer, I think, from uh, the JMA, definitely. Looks like June and July are both struggling a bit with, like, westerlies and, and just generally uh, relatively um, forgettable type weather. I'm not suggesting, like, wash out though here. No sign of, of, like, a summer 2012 or 2007, I wouldn't have thought from this, which is generally rather mediocre, uh, if you like like uh, for, for June and July. And then August is definitely the most interesting month of the three, potentially a lot warmer with winds in from the east, which is going to be a hot direction potentially uh, for the wind in uh, August as it's coming off the continent. So temperatures temperatures potentially get a real boost in uh, August, but also more volatile and uh, much, more, much more in way of rain and also potentially thunder. Uh, for August. So August is definitely the most interesting of the three, you know, meteorological uh, wise. Uh, June and July, just looking rather forgettable, very westerly and a little bit cool uh, a mix. Right, so as I say, this is going to be part of the uh, of the scene model roundup we're going to do on Saturday. We'll get all of those long range models together uh, for the last time and see what they're all showing uh, for the summer, and that'll be, of course, ahead of the Galsworthy summer forecast that we're going to release on uh, Sunday. So uh, you'll see the JMA again, but we won't go into it in detail on Saturday. Uh, we, you know, we'll just it will just be part of the pack, if you like. But you've seen what the model is going for now, so uh, when you see it on Saturday, you'll know uh, broadly how it all works out in terms of a month by month basis. We're going to be back later on uh, with the 10 to 14 day video update, but we'll include all of the regular features, so I shall see you very shortly. But for the JMA seasonal update, if you like JMA Wednesday, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.